something traumatic happens that is so big and so painful that you just can't bear to look at it, the only thing you can do is push it down. This way, no one can see it. And as long as you don't think about it, it's gone. So you carry on with life and it takes everything you have to hold it under the surface. But then one small thing happens that triggers the memory. And everything comes to the surface and it's too much pain all at once. So you lock it back up and you push it back down. And this can be the cycle that you have to live through again and again. And many people are so frightened to go to therapy because they think that is what's gonna happen. But in reality, here's how it actually happens. We don't overwhelm you with everything. We carefully process the memories and all the emotions that come with it in a way that is safe, and at your own pace, so that over time, you can heal. I'm a psychologist, follow for more. Welcome ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Nerd Chronicles. This is your host, the socio nerd, Chris and Paul up in the building. And before I deal with the meat of the bones, dealing with, you know, the hardcore manuscript incels, in the boss base, I would like to take a moment to, to discuss literally um, two key things in general that I want to try and focus on, focus on, which is going to be the backdrop in those videos to come. Trauma, primarily emotional and psychological trauma, not physical trauma. And you can have physical trauma to a point where you do accidents that can lead to emotional and psychological trauma. And the second one is interdependence. And I'm going to literally relay that all into one when it comes to these situations and how I'm going to use that as a backdrop of what I'm going to be discussing in those two YouTube videos to come. Now, with that, I want to try and take a moment to discuss emotional and psychological trauma, right? Emotional and psychological trauma, basically some type of pain or some type of scary or traumatic experience that you once felt that literally impacted your life literally up in a negative way and literally coupled you to the point, thinking in your mind that if you're able to actually hide it and not literally discuss it for a while, it got mad could go away. While once something like this really comes by or whenever like some sort of memory pops up where you're confronted with it again, it pops up and you really get fully triggered and you really start to lose your mind when you least expect it. Without even having um, the proper word at all to actually try to, find, try to recover from your trauma or so actually trying to seek a licensed physician or a licensed psychologist to try and help ease your traumas, which will take some time. That's basically what um, psychological trauma would mainly be about. Um, with that, it could take some time when you deal with a psychologist actually trying to heal some of those ills, um, but it's not going to be a one quick fix thing, like a one day fix thing. The process could take some years. And unfortunately, in some cases, some folks don't even um, make the effort to recover from the hurt and the depression and the trauma that they have faced in the past in the past, in the past of their life. You know what I mean? So this is something really trying to key on as well. But the psychologists, psychologists are mainly here to come up with a strategy and actually trying to come by bit by bit a bit of your ills. As long as you find the right one that suits you that you can definitely relate to, that would be like the most important um, ordeal to literally seal. That would be the best fit um, psychologist for you to literally try to slowly heal and slowly recover from those traumatic events. Now let me further explain to you why I mainly talk about the route of therapy and mental health when it comes to dealing with all these traumas, especially when it comes to the social scene.
Now, I don't think I fully explained my learning condition to you guys in a much, much thorough manner, right? As I don't know if many of y'all know about this, maybe a few of you do, or maybe I've had it, I've discussed this from time to time via previous live streams and all those other discussions, but I'm gonna actually discuss it a little more again to be mainly frank. Um, I was diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome around the year 1994, uh, when I was three years old. My birth year is 1991. So I was diagnosed around the year 1994, and fortunately my parents, who were actually very intelligent at the time and actually successful in their own right, um, they were able to catch up on the ills and catch up on certain symptoms that I had, because I mainly like was well within myself. I was like more into myself. I was actually like had my own little bubble. Most of the time I still have my little bubble today. Mainly being primarily introverted. You know, sometimes I have my own space, I have my own private abode where I can actually just try and just be around, be peaceful and all these things. And they noticed that I wasn't really the most talkable dude, um, basically out there. I wasn't even like that talkable, that talkable child that's mainly out there. Died on the psychologist, the doctors diagnosed me with Asperger's syndrome. Um, 14 is like in the very, very mild part and what Asperger's syndrome mainly is, is a very, very mild condition on the autism spectrum disorder. So yes, I do have autism. All right, I just wanna try and make sure I make this very clear. And I'm basically just looking in front of a camera, literally being very thoroughly um, as, you know, my teachers, my elementary school teachers that actually just literally drilled up in me to this very day since I'm actually very used to speaking in front of a camera in front of you guys here. Um, it's more so of like a fix. It like takes like a lot of work to literally practice for me to have these mannerisms that I literally had to develop literally down packed, right? I was placed in a special education class, started from pre-kindergarten all the way through third grade. Fourth to seventh grade, I had a, a basically assist me to actually assist me in like all the social cues and everything. And then starting in eighth grade, I was basically on my own, right? During that time, I was able to meet up with other people that have my condition and others that are probably were soft that have stronger cases of autism and other forms of bipolar disorder, um, other cases of learning disabilities, ADHD, Down syndrome, you mainly name it. I was um, basically up in there with my classmates and soon to be close friends, eventually close friends, for a good number of years um, prior to for me actually moving to schools and my parents really moving me schools down to a closer district based on where I live up in the New York City metropolitan area. Um, we were up by in this school, um, Frank, Frank and Navin Elementary School, that was the name of the school, up in Pearl River in Rockland County, um, which was literally miles away from Manhattan. And there was this um, very, very, very um, young teacher by the name of Diane Meyer that actually invited my parents to bring me up into their special education programs to actually develop this, like all the special education students that have certain ills and certain circumstances like myself to really try and develop, um, basically try to prepare with all the other students up in a normal world. You know, Diane, um, the elementary school teacher that came by, um, may she rest in peace. Um, she was the driving force of basically developing Robert Christian Mill Paul, if you will. Um, she was the one that helped me develop more in the beginning stages of my social life and my social skills. And that's one of the things that I will never, ever, ever um, forget. As well as some of my closest friends, as well as like some other teachers that actually came by around the whole ordeal. Um, and they were literally anal at all of us through T based on how we have to speak to people, how we have to look at people when we're speaking all the time. This is what I'm literally looking at the camera, literally at you right now, which I'm actually trying to build up uh, more and more and actually learn how to speak clearly towards people. And I not only just had the help of my elementary school teacher that actually just helped me get by, I also had the help of my speech psychologist, uh, my speech therapist at the time, um, who we are still very, very close friends with to this day that lives minutes away from me. 
You know, I'm, I'm very, very, very grateful for her as well. You know, both of them are very married. Both of them have very strong families of their own, have kids of their own, have grandkids of their own. And those in our yards, they mainly lead by example. Those are the women that I basically relied on um, that literally helped, get, helped me get to that point. And those are the women that I will not even forget besides, you know, the parents and the aunts and, you know, the uncles and all that stuff. Those, those are the people that actually made one of the biggest staples of my early life. And that is something that I will never forget. But they had me mainly take frequent therapy sessions when I was basically a child, sensing on how I felt, sensing how I was reacting. And I went to other therapy sessions, literally up in the city as well, basically monitoring like my well-being, monitoring my mannerisms, literally the whole nine yards. And a lot of y'all may be thinking that therapy is like literally far, far effects. But let me not just like fully jump in there yet. All right. Middle school, right? I was basically teased just because my mannerism and just because I wasn't really fully too following some of the trends that a lot of the middle schoolers were mainly dealing with just to get in. And I used to try to fit in and trying to be like everyone else. And I was basically going through freaking therapy sessions after doing all the blame disrespects and not even dealing with the mannerism and not really understanding what I'm doing. Based on very, very immature, immature teenagers literally acting a fool and literally acting like numbskulls. Um, so those were one of the things that literally just drilled up in my head and I had that trauma literally still at times for years on end. Going through high school thinking everything's okay, but I just didn't fully develop some of the social skills and the subtle cues and even develop like the same to literally approach people that I actually do now. The moment I attended grad school study for applied mathematics. And yes, I had my ills in college too. Don't get me wrong, I had my ills in college as well when it comes to social skills and I struggle in that. And I had my ills when it comes to if I actually dealing with certain women and other certain dudes as well. And I'm gonna get to that when I actually talk to the master of incels up in the building. I will discuss that definitely down the line. But I discuss those things when it comes to therapy and psychologists and all these other things down to a T. Because I've been through this whole therapy route many, many different times. Many different times before in my youth. I'm no stranger to therapy whatsoever. I'm actually used to this type of ordeal. And I know a lot of folks probably hadn't really been into therapy for like how long I know. In order for you to really get like a therapy session when dealing with mental health, um, you would have to actually try and get like a referral from your primary care physician in order for that to work. Or you don't really need it. You just have to try and make sure you get the right brand of insurance, see which insurance would pick the right psychologist. But if that psychologist is not the right one for you, then more than likely you're gonna have to pay out of pocket in order to find the one that you actually yearly seek. And that's the unfortunate part when it comes to this whole ordeal when it comes to money. But do not shy away from it, okay? Do not shy away from it at all because it could be beneficial literally down your, literally probably for the future of your life, literally down to a T. You know what I'm saying? So I can feel your shoes, you know? Everyone. And I repeat, everyone has gone through some crazy traumas up in their life and get stoned. All right, sorry, um, ladies and gentlemen. Um, my apologies um, for the stoned um, camera frozen, being froze once again. You know, silly me. Stoned! Get stoned! You know, um,. As I was saying before, um, you know, everyone has their own set of traumas and bouts of depression from time to time, which they can either choose to heal or they got to still be bitter and actually just let it rid them or let it actually just disrupt their lives, probably for the rest of their days, right? And probably will take it to the grave with them. It's just a matter of, you know, you just can't be worrying about what everyone else is doing. You just have to worry about what your own stuff is doing. And therapy is really the most important first step, um, depending on which therapist you go to that suits your specific needs, um, just for you to improve your life, which is the number one most important step. 
know where they're having to go to. So the comments. Now the second step and the second most important thing that you need to overcome trauma is of the following. This is John. John is currently shopping for corn to eat for dinner. As John leaves the store, he thinks to himself, what a great day to be independent. I'm glad I can provide for myself without having to rely on others. Now wait a minute, is this really true? Can John provide for himself independently of others? Let's take a closer look. How did John get the corn? John picked it up off the shelf, which was stocked by a supermarket employee who received it from a shipment. The truck driver who brought the corn shipment got it from a warehouse many miles away. At this warehouse, many laborers sorted the corn after receiving it from a different truck driver who delivered it from a farm many more miles away. At this farm, the corn was harvested by a farmer who grew the corn using the fertile soil and water provided by the earth and the light provided by the sun. All of these people, processes, and the earth were involved in getting the corn into John's hands. As it turns out, John is depending on a lot, so he may not be as independent as he thinks. Not only that, but all of these people also rely on John to buy the corn to ensure their livelihoods. Even the corn relies on John's support so that the farmer can continue to cultivate it and help it grow. But why doesn't John see these relationships? It's hard for John to recognize how interconnected he is to so many other people as well as the earth when he's so separated from them. He is separated from them by physical distance, the anonymous processes of production that obscure the identities of the workers, and by his unawareness of the web that connects them. But why does it matter if John does not see this interdependence? Are there any consequences if John keeps on thinking that he's independent? Well, if John can't see how he depends on the store employees, the truck drivers, the warehouse workers, the farmers, and the earth, then he won't think about their well-being or how their well-being affects his. As long as John gets his corn, that's all that matters to him. So when the warehouse workers or the store employees or the truck drivers or the farmers aren't being paid enough, it doesn't matter to John. When the many miles the corn has to travel to get to the store uses up tons of fossil fuels contributing to climate change, it doesn't matter to John. When planting corn on the same plot of land season after season depletes the soil of nutrients, it doesn't matter to John. When the fertilizers that are used to synthetically replace these nutrients contaminate the water, it doesn't matter to John. John's continual indifference to all such things perpetuates the degradation of nature and human life. But what if he saw all of these relationships every time he bought the corn? What if, instead of seeing himself as being fundamentally separate, he saw his existence as being fundamentally relational within a web of the earth and all of the people and processes? If John began to see this, then he would realize that he cannot live without any of these things. Without the warehouse workers, or the store employees, or the truck drivers, or the farmers, John would not have corn, or any food for that matter. What's more, without the earth, John would not have anything. If John could see his interdependencies, then he would recognize the need to value and take care of all these links in the web. John is one link in the web of mutuality with all of them. He cannot exist separately. What about you? What depends on you? On what do you depend? Interdependence. The last step. Okay? The last step once the whole therapy and once the whole trauma mainly wears out and much of it is already gone and you mainly recover from that, then comes the interdependence. Then comes building up humility and building up appreciation for what you've gone through and what you've learned based on those smack experiences that you've had in their past, whether it's even your childhood or even recent memory. You know what I'm saying? What have you learned thus far? How are we able to actually guide the folks? Are you still bitter inside? Or are you still unhealed from all this stuff and actually like straying other people like and they're doing the wrong stuff? Or are you actually basically learning based on the hard way you actually try to actually give it another shot using better judgment, you know, using better wisdom and using a better strategy. That's real key. But also when you do these types of actions, when you make these types of moves, when you actually pick up like certain certain ordeals and take certain actions, understand the causes of how those actions were laid there in the first place. Understand certain events and how they were laid there in the first place. Understand certain folks and how they actually created tasks for you to actually for you to actually complete and actually seal the deal in order for you to actually get to where you need to go in order to actually get that said item literally up in the first place. 
is all based on interdependence. It's just like when you're actually working for a company, you know. They expect you to do certain tasks within a certain time or they expect you to be on time just to make sure things run smooth so that either the co-workers or the supervisor doesn't get like too fully overworked, overwhelmed when it comes to work and when it comes to dealing with clients or patients, they don't have to have that much pressure being put on them. They have to actually have to sort out all the stuff and they have to actually strategize um, some of the stuff that actually needs to be done in order for the work to actually like, fully be completed at a certain time. Same with relationships, right? Yes, you can be independent as an adult and there's nothing wrong with that. Independence is definitely needed when it comes to certain times, when it comes to certain tasks and skills, when it comes to having your own space. But when it comes to having certain goals that you actually got to have, when it comes to expanding a family, interdependence is needed. It is required, okay? It is definitely required for women just to even like to try to get a sperm bank if you actually want to raise a kid alone, right? They're actually very independent on that sperm, on that semen alone, you know, basically just like fapping himself off and everything just to try and get like a sperm though. You know what I'm saying? Trying to moisturize himself all over the place just for him to explode and produce some milk, you know, just for the woman to have in the hopes of having the IVF treatment so that she could actually have a successful pregnancy and hopefully have a successful childbirth up in the hospital and successful label literally down the line nine, 10 months from now. That's another example of interdependence or, you know, you're dealing with scrambled eggs and moisturizing literally the whole nine yards as well when it comes with your partner or when it comes with your boyfriend or your husband in order for you to actually expand your family, in order for you to expand your legacy that is acquired as well as the man actually needing the woman to really try and rear the child and actually rear the seed and develop that seed into a child they need that woman to literally do so. They can't develop a woman by himself unless God decides to literally try to make a robot off of thin air with oil and basically with his semen to literally build. But then again, you know, you don't know how this whole time stuff basically wears off. But you see what I mean when it comes with um, interdependence. Remember, two key words, trauma and interdependence. Therapy is gonna be the cure all to handle your trauma will be the first step. And interdependence is gonna be the next step in order for you to actually rely on working on a team in order to actually acquire your set goals and based on what you need in life. Whether it's like another partner, whether it's a coworker, whether it's an acquaintance, or another friend of yours. All right, interdependence. Not dependence all the time. Not independence all the time. Interdependence is needed in order for you to actually live a more fulfilling life. Juicy! So in closing, you know what I mean? Always, always rely on getting your mental health checked out. Always rely on getting your, getting your mental health in order and make sure you rely on independence and actually make sure you rely on other folks in certain cases. Because understand, you can't do everything by yourself. You need people that actually trying to encourage you, actually help you by your side. Yes, you definitely have to do the majority of the work, but you can't rely on doing everything by yourself. And those are one of the things that I will be discussing with in future videos when it comes to type of ordeal. And I will literally discuss those things really down to the T in relation to therapy and interdependence. Y'all be on the look for your lookout for that. Chris Paul from the Nerd Chronicles is signing out. Good night.